Welcome everyone to episode episode two of um uh the the Our Voice Our Choice podcast. Uh, in this episode, we'll be covering the topic uh, rights at work, um, and the and the and the champion that I've got I've got as my guest speaker. Uh, for this topic is Joseph Popov. Joseph is a he loves his books. He's a, he's says he's a says he's a full on bookworm, and he he likes his video games too. Um, welcome, Joseph. Thank you for agreeing to come on my podcast and and chat with me. Um, yeah, tell us a bit about yourself, sir. So, what about me? Um, as as Aaron said, I love my reading. I'm a Harry Potter fan. Um, I I'm a I have a law degree. I'm 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 an admitted lawyer in New South Wales. Um, yeah, and um. Just, I'm passionate about improving outcomes, especially for people with disabilities in employment and um, human rights. Yeah. That's, that's great. Um, Joseph, thank you for that. Um, another Harry Potter fan. Are you a Harry Potter fan? I do, yeah. but I, I've never read the books. I've, I really enjoyed all the movies, though. Um... What about the audio books? Have you given No, them? no, I I haven't read the books or listened to the books. Yeah. I've only ever just watched the movies. Yeah. Um Why did you why did you do why did you dis, decide to study law? I think cuz I got I got a good mark as part of my HSC, you know. Got accepted into Royal Australia Uni. I guess I could because I knew I wanted to help others. It was just um, it seemed to be the most logical way I could help others. But obviously, I'm helping others in different ways now. But I'd love to, yeah, do some more legal stuff. But yeah, I just wanted to help others. I guess. Oh, that's cool. You sound like me. I'm passionate about helping people, but um, I would um, uh, like would like to help people in different ways. Like I've I've always had an interest in the police force, um, and another way is through being a dis. For being a a disability support we support worker sorry which I ha- I have a bit of experience in um and I wouldn't mind getting back into that but uh, we'll see what happens. That's quite life, you know. Sometimes you start something and then I've got friends who worked as lawyers and but they're now doing something else and it's like you know you just got to do with. What life gives you? For sure, I've been I've been like that with many different things. Like just for sports, um, for example, I was uh, I started playing. I was sorry, I was playing cricket, and then someone said, "Oh, are you interested in playing touch football?" And I'm like, um. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, because I played it at school as a kid and was you know was was, you, fairly good at it and, so I, I said yeah I'm in and then sort of just cricket just sort of, just became non-existent really, yeah. but. Um, Shall we get? Yeah, well, I think let's let's, let's let's get into it, eh? Um, so Joe. What are our rights at work? Uh, so, rights at work, so that's a big topic. 
So there's at the moment 11 rights that all employees at work have and those rights are covered under the National Employment Standards. And then on top of those rights, you know, you've got the other rights such as the right to be free from discrimination at work, but we'll go into that later. So rights at work, rights at work, rights at work. Um, so, couple of things to stand, that stands out is, so nationally, there's a thing called the Fair Work Act, and it applies to all employees except for state government employees. So that means if you work in the New South Wales government, you're under different rights. And unfortunately, I can't recall those on the top of my head. But nationally, the rights are, the, on average, a maximum working week, which is generally 38 hours a week, is classified full-time. Now, you can work more than that, but it's considered overtime. And for some people, overtime is extra, there's extra benefits. So you, you get extra money or, you know what I mean? So the general rights is um, 38 hours a week unless extra hours are reasonable and necessary. Um, the right to request a flexible working arrangement. So, crucially, it only applies to those who are not casual. So, if you're a casual employee, you can't request a flexible working arrangement. However, casual employees can only request a flexible working arrangement if they've worked for the employer for at least 12 months and have worked for them on a regular basis. So, say you've worked for an employer for 16 months and you work pretty much nearly every Monday and every Tuesday as a casual employee, you can request a flexible working arrangement then but not if you don't work those regular shifts. Um, now, flexible working arrangement, it's a negotiation between you and the employer. Um, so that can include the um, changes to hours of work. So say instead of doing like a nine to five job, you may do say, eight to four, or, you know, 10 to six, or you can even change the hours. So maybe instead of doing that nine to five, I'll do 10 to two and someone, and you can share the job with another person who will do the two to five. Um, now, such a request has to be in writing. It's got to mention the changes you want and why. And the employer has to respond to the request within three weeks. Um, and it can only, employers can only refuse the request if there are reasonable business grounds to do so. So it's more if it's too difficult for them to, um, too difficult to allow the request. Um, and if so, and if so, they must, um, 
provide details as to why the request for flexible work was refused, so why it was denied. Um, there's a right for casual employees who have worked for at least 12 months on a regular, on a routine basis to become permanent staff members. Now, there's benefits with permanent staff members and benefits with casual employment. Do you want to know the dif difference, benefits between permanent oh, and casual employment? Please, please tell us, but I was just going to jump in there because you, you mentioned um, uh, you, you were talking about hours and... Uh, uh, you know, you know, having good work flexibility. Yeah. I've I, I've noticed when I've applied for, um, for sorry for part time jobs that they say in their job advertisement that, um, you must be flexible. You must have, or it says like something like, to memory, uh, like you must have um, um. Um, you you know, good um. Good good what and I put like good flexibility. Um, good sorry, good availability. Um. Uh, and to 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 be quite honest, because I'm learning plenty, plenty here. I didn't know. Uh, to be quite honest, that that was a part of. Uh, your rights at work. Um, it's it's only your right if you've worked for the employer for at least twelve months. So it's not when you work for the employer at the start. It's more if you've worked with them for at least twelve months. You can request. You can request, and it's up to the employer to. Right, so your your rights at work don't don't become um available to you until after the twelve month no, period. Um, your rights at work generally do become available to you when you start work, but the flexible working request oh. aspect doesn't come does doesn't occur until you've at least worked for the employer for at least 12 months. And I'm not a casual employee. Right, right. So it's the, yeah, it's the, the, the flexible, um, uh, the, the flexible work hours, right. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll call it that that becomes available after 12, you've been with an employer for 12 months. And provided you're not a casual employee. And provided you're not a, a casual employee. Yeah. Um, yeah, and if for some reason you are still a casual employee after those 12 months, um, <coughs> um, you may be eligible for flexible hours if you work like, on regular days, so if you know in those 12 months you work um, every Monday from 10 to 5, you know, you can put in a request, but the employer can refuse to honour that request if it was, um, if it's unreasonable for them if it's too hard to implement that request. Mm. Okay, it make de definitely makes sense. Thanks, Joseph. Um Um just moving on with our I'll hit you with our with with the next question. Uh, there's more whites, but that was just the fun there's more what to work than 
those flexible working and what I've just discussed then. Right. Yeah. Did you want to know more or move on to the next question? Oh, please, if you, um... Yeah, please share... Um... Yeah, please share all the... All, all the rights at work. Um, so... Um... As I said before, casual employees have the right to request to become permanent employees if they've worked for the employer for at least 12 months on a regular, on regular hours and regular days. Um, so the benefits of permanent employment is that you get access to paid leave, so paid holiday leave. But if you're a casual employee, you're not eligible to pay leave. But um, you are. So they. But you do get a twenty five percent increase in, you know. The minimum payment that you would get if you were part time. So technically, you'd earn twenty five percent more per hour as a casual, but you won't get access to the paid leave. So, yeah. I was, yeah, I was, I was aware that casual employees get, um, uh, they do get paid a highly hourly rate yeah. than, say, a part-time or full-time employee. Yeah. yeah. But, as you say, they don't get access to paid Pay, pay any paid leave. Um, mostly that's true, but there's just been a change in the law recently. So the only entitlement that the only leave paid leave entitlement casual employees are entitled to is if they've been exposed to family or domestic violence. That's only just happened in the last couple of months. So casual employees aren't only entitled to paid leave if they've been exposed to family or domestic violence. I have to say, Joe, that, that's a bit rough that they've only brought that um uh that sorry, that what could you call it law or right recently. That should have been in you know, many, many moons ago. Yeah, um, well, I think it was mixed you off things, so, um, it was mixed you off things, I think, because previously it was, what, to unpaid leave, so it was unpaid before, but now it's paid, and so it's, it's a tricky one, because with most of the paid leave, it's generally the employees who pay, but there is some paid leave that's up to the state government, and I think some, yeah, so it's sort of like it's a tricky one because they don't want to, you know, governments are trying to, A, be budget conscious and, you know, try to um, look after businesses as well as the everyday people. So it's trying it's hard trying to balance everything. So um now um so um all permanent employees are entitled to annual leave, um sick leave, um like so paid sick leave, um Paid annual leave, paid compassionate leave, um, paid family and domestic violence leave, um, so, um, long service leave, parental leave, and I think, um, casual employees are entitled to those leaves, but it's unpaid. So casual, that's why it's more expensive to hire 
casual on an early basis because in theory, in theory, that 25% additional that casuals earn, it's meant to compensate for them not having that leave. Um, you've got rights to um, refuse to work on public holidays if it's reasonable. Um, permanent employees can are uh, allowed to receive notice if they've been terminated um, from their job. So if they're no longer required for the job, the permanent employees have the right to be notified prior to being no longer being employed. Casual employees don't have that right. And yeah, that's pretty much it. No, I know it. Uh, I know with casual employees, they can just be um, dismissed yeah. on the spot, and yeah. um, you know it's kind of always. You know, for example, you know you might you mean you might be thinking of you know th- you know I'm doing well at at my at at my casual job, yeah. and then and then you go into work one day, and the the you know one of your bosses says to you, oh, um. Sorry, we um we no we no longer need you, and it's it's always a it's always a a shock that that stings really. It's yeah. not it's not very pleasant. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, unfortunately, that's the case. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. So um, you want to move on because they're pretty much the key rights of all workers. No worries, we shall move on. Yes. Thanks for that, Joe. Sorry, um, I'm just conscious of timing and stuff. Oh, that's all good. Um, if someone next question to you is is if someone thinks or knows that their right to work aren't being upheld, um, uh, what are, what are their options to 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 to, to get this? Uh, what I'm going to call ugly problem sorted. Um, so, I think their first point of call is try and deal with it internally. So try and deal with it within the organisation. So if you have a supervisor, there might be a supervisor who's in charge of that supervisor. No, like a, there might be a complaint process internally. Unfortunately, if that complaint process doesn't work, then you might have to go to a union or even a lawyer to check if to confirm that your rights has not been upheld. And if your rights has not been upheld, you can. You can lodge a complaint to the Fair Commission. And the frustrating thing is with how the Fair Commission operates. It's so it's not like the court system. So the Fair Commission is case by case and it's predominantly they try and resolve the dispute without um judges and it's more about trying to come to an agreement with all the parties involved and if they can't come to an agreement then it would be up to you if you want to pursue the matter further and if you want to pursue the matter further you'd have to get a lawyer and go through the courts. And I... Um... And going through the court system, one, it's um gonna it's it's gonna be costly, mm-hmm. and two, you know it could be, you know it could turn into an ugly mess or, um, as a as a, as as they like to call it a a, a shit fight, um, but you've kind of, 
Well, that's that, that's great, Joe, because you've kind of really uh, answered my next question was was what can someone do if they if they didn't achieve their the desired result? So, as I said, if they didn't achieve their desired result in, internally, they can go through the fair commission. If the fair commission doesn't win, they can go through the court system. And so, within the court system, there's multiple and courts operate on a hierarchy. So, there's structure to the court. Um, I think most matters get held in the federal court after the fair work and then it goes to the full bench if you don't like the federal court decision and then after the full bench it then goes to the high court which is the last you know decision maker and if if you don't like it then tough luck you know you've got to accept what the high court says mm, basically if you Basically, if you, if you don't look, if, um, uh, if you don't like the um, decision the High Court makes, you you probably your only choice is to, um, is to is to leave and find pl- employment elsewhere. Well, to be fair, the if you go through. If you seek to resolve the dispute with the fair work and all that, there's no obligation on the court system for you to reinstate employment <coughs> or more about monetary compensation rather than... So, because they're saying so the main thing, if you do lots of complaints, more often than not, uh, you will not be entitled to reinstatement of your job. You will just get compensated, like monetarily compensated, because the thing that if you decide to challenge decisions, they say that it leads to a lack of goodwill with the employer, and that is why there's no obligation for the employment to be reinstated if you lodge a complaint. So, just um, just recapping, so you could receive a... um, Monetary compensation. Yeah, so uh, uh, like a... um, Sorry, I'll get it out in a minute. Um, it's like a, a payout. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I I think normally when 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 you do 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 agree on a payout, you you that use that usually means that's the end of your employment yeah. at that at at that that business or organization. Yeah. 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 And so that's pretty much the main the main remedy that the court can use. There are other things that the court can use, but that's the main one. Okay, that's that's um yeah, that, that's awesome, Joseph. I've certainly learned I've certainly learned stuff. I to be honest, I thought I used to know. I thought I used to know a little bit, but I have to say um, I was I was I was wrong there. Ah, uh, there's no right or wrong answer. The law changes all the time. You just have to keep up to date. And yeah, it's yeah. Don't be too hard on yourself. Um. Well, did Joseph um. A pr- I greatly appreciate all that. Um, uh, now, check out question. This is our fun question. It's, you know, we can have a bit of fun with this one. My my question is, is what is your all-time 
because I know you're a video gamer, yeah. what is your all-time favourite video game or uh, video game character? How about I let you go first, Darren? Which one are you going to pick? Right, so... I'll, pro- I'll give two answers. So, all-time favourite game is actually a game series, and that would... That would probably have to be the Assassin's Creed series. I played nearly all of them. Um, I enjoyed m- most of them. There were a couple that um, that I didn't think were uh, were any good. But uh, in terms of video game character, um. It would have to be uh, Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption 2. All right. He was just... Um, he, 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 he was just... He was cool, you know? He was... He was you know, he was, ba- he was bad, uh, uh, badass. And... Um, and the, the guy that did his voice, Roger Clark, he actually won an award for his... For his performances, Arthur Morgan, he, um, yeah, it was just, right. it was just, it was just, it was just awesome. Yeah. So he, so he's my um, favorite video game character. It used to be Ezio Auditore from Assassin's Creed Two, Brotherhood, and Revelations, yeah. Yeah. but but it's now Arthur Morgan. Beautiful. Um, so, can I answer both? Yeah. So, favourite video game is one that I've just played recently, Baldur's Gate 3. Um, so much freedom to do what you want in that game, Baldur's Gate 3. Um, favourite video game character, I love Daxter from Jack and Daxter. Ah, right. Did, did, did you ever play Jack and Daxter? No, 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 that's, that's, that's... I've heard of the game, but that's that's just another one that I need to add to the list of games that I haven't played yet. <laughs> yeah, because I think it was a PS2 game, and I think the developers have said they're no longer remastering or remaking it. They've moved on from it. So the last gaming console you could play that was on the PS4. No, oh, that's a bit of a... That's a bit of a bit of bit of a shame yes. that they're not going to make any more of them. But uh, yeah. Uh, in terms of uh, Baldur's Gate Three, I've I've heard I've heard only really good things about it. Yeah. But I looked into it myself, and I yeah, I don't think it's my kind of game. Too too time consuming. Uh no, I won't say that because played Assassin's Creed Odyssey and that is a huge game. Yeah. Uh, I've spent many, many, many hours on that. Um, I think it's just the fact that it's like, it's, it kind of looks like a tabletop game. You're looking down yeah. and, yeah, I'm not really a, really a fan of that. Uh, like, I think it's only turn-based if you're doing combat, but the general game is open world. It's only turn based if you're Batman people. Right. Oh, that bit I didn't know. So. So um. So the game itself, when you move around and jump and do stuff, it's not turn based. It's only turn based if you battle people. Okay. No, I might have to have a another. I might have to have a re look at it then. Uh, like turn based combat isn't for everybody. Like I like both turn based and normal combat. Um, both when it comes to that sort of stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey was was an RPG game. Yeah. Um. And at first, I to I wasn't a fan of it because I. I hadn't, I hadn't really played m- m- many RPG games. Like, really, Assassin's Creed game, the originals, it was all about stealth and yeah. 
I mean, you could engage in, um, like, open combat and you use, like, dodges and counter-attacks and stuff like that. So I was used to that. So it took me... Yeah. Took me a bit of a bit of time to get to used to RPG games. Like I, I know, Assassin's Creed sort of went the RPG direction, starting with um, Origins. Origins, yeah, and I, I never finished that game. So, so, so you've done o- Odyssey. Odyssey, Valhalla. Um, I did the very first Assassin's Creed. I did two. I did uh, Brotherhood. I did Revelations. I did Assassin's Creed Three, Unity. I did Syndicate. Uh, Syndicate. I did Black Flag. Although I never, f- uh, with Unity, I never finished that either. Um, I th- I think the only Assassin's Creed games I haven't played are the Origins, Odyssey, and Valor. Oh. But I've got them all, but I haven't played up to speed. Oh, yeah. Too good to be done Oh, when you... Um, shall we... Yeah, yeah. Um... That video game can be done for another... We can have a whole... Yeah, day I, think, uh, I think we'll probably keep going on and on about video games when it's meant to be a podcast about... Employment. Um, rights at work and... Um, and covering the theme supported decision making so um yeah let's call that a wrap and thank you very much joseph for for again again thank you for coming in and um chatting with us about rights at work my pleasure i hope um i'm hoping that the audience have learned um learn about rights at work as much as i have yeah so Thank you very much, Joseph. Um, and my pleasure. And to be honest, those whites that work, they're only the very basic. There's more whites that work. But you could go into a whole day's discussion on the whites that work. And yeah, we've only got a limited time. So I just uh, share the key thing. And, and I... And I do really appreciate that. I I think, as you say, I reckon we could talk for we could talk for months <laughs> about it, yeah. Um, yeah. and still not cover everything. But Agreed. but again, thank you, Joseph. My pleasure. Um, um, and thank you to the audience for for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and I shall. Catch you in the next one, which will be covering the topic. Um, dis- get the topic discrimination, and Joseph will also be talking. Uh, will be also talking about 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 that topic as well. So, thank you, guys. See you. Have a have a great week. Um, so actually, sorry, guys. Um. I forgot to mention. Um, you can you can listen to the uh, the our voice, our choice podcast on on Spotify on on YouTube, um, and a and a few others. Um, but I will I'll let you know what those other ones are in the at the at, at the beginning of the next episode. All right. Thank you all. See you. Have a have a great one.